Hi guys. So today we are with Aris and Jan for our next uh, podcast. How are you doing, guys? Very well. How are you? Very, very good. So where are you at the moment? Uh, we are actually in Berlin, which was unplanned. But um, yeah, now we are in Berlin for some uh, home holiday <laughs> All right. before we go back uh, on the road uh, in a few weeks. Yeah. Great. So just before we get started, can you please both introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm young. I'm uh, 35 years old and um, I uh, studied uh, in Denmark. Um, and at the moment, we are on our bicycle with our social mission. Yeah, and I'm uh, Iris. I'm 44 years old and uh, I'm a social worker and um, I'm the project owner of Cycling for Society, which is the social mission Jan was just uh, mentioning. All right. And where are you guys from? Berlin, Germany. Yeah, exactly. Are Where's you both one? German? Yes. 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 Okay, great. So when and why did you decide to start cycling? <laughs> Um, so we decided to start this trip um, in December 2020, yeah. um, which was um, a period of time when we both have been quarantined because of COVID. So someone uh, we know was uh, having COVID and we were contact people. So we uh, had been in quarantine. And um, obviously, when you're in quarantine, you have a lot of time to think about things <laughs> and um, <laughs> Uh, before actually um, we met both of us lived abroad we didn't cycle back then but we lived abroad so we had to come back because of the pandemic to Germany and so we were sitting this uh, snowy and uh, dark afternoon in Yanni's home and um, we're thinking what to do so we were like we definitely want to leave Germany again and, and, and travel. And then I was uh, getting really stubborn and uh, frustrated. And I'm like, I don't care how we do it. And even if we do it with a bicycle, we're going to do it. <laughs> and then Jan turned around and he's like, yeah, okay, let's do it with a bicycle. I'm like, no, this was a joke. And he's like, no, 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 no. We can actually do it with a bicycle. <laughs> so you never cycled before. That was your first bike trip ever. Yeah. yeah, it was our first long distance uh, bike trip, yes, yeah. for sure. So far, we only uh, traveled on the weekends, like with the bicycle, because here in Berlin, there's like amazing nature around, like a lot of forest and lakes and uh, fields. So we do weekend trips, but uh, we never even thought about bicycle touring before. It was well, why did you decide the bicycle and not maybe like doing it by van, like other people mm. do? Why you choose the bicycle? Yeah, so we, we were thinking about um, buying a van and then travel the world uh, with that. But I don't know, like, first it was the maintenance. So what happened when our van is broken somewhere, you know? And uh, also the cost was a big um, issue for us. Like uh, buying a van is not cheap. No, it's buying not. A bike you know, but, but buying a bike was also not cheap, <laughs> but if, uh, we can uh, fix it by ourselves and uh, something is uh, broken. Yeah, it's way cheaper to fix the bike than to fix the van. Exactly. <laughs> and, I mean, for me, I didn't like the idea of a van because uh, I, I am very environmentally aware. So um, I never had a car in my life and I hate the idea of uh, buying petrol. So uh, I didn't like the idea of... Uh, doing it by car and like being restricted also at the borders, which is also a problem when you go by car sometimes. Yeah. So, um, and this is why we then were like, yeah, definitely we're gonna do it with the bike. It's the most environmental friendly. And also uh, regarding the project we came up with, um, we knew that uh, when we are out there by bike, like heavy loaded, you know, people stop you and ask, so why are you doing that? La, 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 la. So <laughs> we are getting in contact with people much faster mm -hmm. since we're on the bike. Uh, and I used to backpack before and it's like, you basically never get in contact with locals, not in the same way. And um, so, yeah, since we're on the bike, like the like biking itself is uh, raising awareness. So. Yeah, for sure. That's, sure. uh, that's what's how, how did you plan the trip? Because it's your first time cycling. So how did you decide what to buy and this kind of thing, the kind of bike, even though to buy your first bike, how did you manage all of this? Did you do a lot of research? Yes, we did. It was a lot of research. 
uh, we checked also some YouTube channels, of course. And um, yeah, it's like in the end was always what is available at the moment, because yeah. at that time it was really difficult to get a bike. It still is. <laughs> and uh, so we were like, what bike we can get and how much will it cost? So, and of course the quality and we were like um, looking for some reviews. And so we found some new nice tips. So when we decided to buy, buy, a, buy a bike was more like uh, what's stable and uh, what will not break very fast. Yeah, and also comfort. I mean, I, uh, with you, it was faster because Yanni already did a lot of research and then he's like, I'm going to buy this bike. So we actually drove to a different uh, place in Germany to get his bike. But for me, it was um, like I had to try a lot of different bikes uh, in order to see if they're comfortable for me because I have some physical um, problems. So I wanted to be um, uh, comfortable and mm -hmm. not be in pain all the time. So. Oh, yeah. But as Yanni said, it was a nightmare to get a touring bike here in, Ge in Berlin. Everyone is just uh, getting racing bikes in all yeah. single speeds. So <laughs> this was How was hard. your first days on the bike? How did you feel the first time, the first day that you went? Like, how many kilometers did you do on your first day, for example? The first day was not a lot of kilometers. It was like, because, 65. yeah, 65 or something. And it felt unreal. Like um, something like it is really happening at the moment because the <laughs> first day it felt like a weekend trip. But um, so for me, it took some time until I realized, okay, um, we are now free and <laughs> you will be uh, on the journey for uh, longer. Um, but the first day was for me like... No, for me, it was horrible. Yeah. I w remember I was crying the uh, last two hours all the time. <laughs> because the thing is, we, we started with the Euro Velo 7. And uh, be, like, we didn't start in Berlin because we know like the whole area already by heart because this is what we did all the weekends. So we took a train to Prague and we started in Czech Republic. So, um, and like in our head, Czech Czechia is hilly, but not mountainous. So we were like, yeah, okay, that's an easy start. But what we didn't know is that E7 is actually um, just hilly, but the hills are super steep. Like they have like 20, 25 percent. And we've never seen anything like that. Like Berlin is flat. So and then we were planning to ride our usual 90 to 100 kilometers because this, is, you know, this was easy before. And then after 60 kilometers of up and down and we already had a thousand kilometers in elevation, I was like, Seriously, if this is going to go on for the rest of the trip, I'm going to go back home. Like, uh, I can't manage. Like, I physically can't manage. And I couldn't, we didn't reach the campground, so I couldn't be on the bike anymore. I was so much in pain and I was exhausted. So we asked a local farmer if we can just pitch our tent because I really, like, I couldn't go any further. And I was so frustrated in the first night because I was uh, totally underestimating how much work this would be. And we are actually in a good shape because mm. we did a lot of sports before, like jogging, climbing, yoga and all this, and obviously cycling. But this it's different. Really Being on a bike is very different. Yeah. It's so different. And I was so underestimating it. And uh, yeah, I was pretty frustrated in the first day. I didn't even have the chance to think about, ah, this is my life now. Like I'm free because I was just a pain. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't. I, I remember my anything. first, my first uh, touring, uh, it was exactly the same. I cycled in Australia. But I bought uh -huh. a $200 bicycle. I didn't have money, so it was $200 bicycle. I did 80 kilometers on the first day. And at the end of the day, I was like, what the hell I'm doing? You know, like, <laughs> I'm in pain. I was like, I don't want to be in pain like this every day. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I almost wanted to quit on the first day. You know, I was like, damn, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> It is so much it's harder. Hard. Yeah. It's really hard. Now it's like, okay, that's just what we do. Yeah. But in the beginning, it yeah, was yeah. hard work. I think the first two weeks, this is where you decide. Yeah, that's on. the first two weeks. The first yeah, two weeks, yeah. that is painful. And then your leg is getting used to it. The bum, yeah, exactly. the bum is terrible the first two weeks. And I, you can't even sit anymore. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's so true. It's, it's so fun. True. That's good. Yeah. That's good that you mentioned this because people who want to start cycling, they're gonna have to know that it's not that easy at the beginning. You know, yeah. they're gonna have to get through the first two weeks. 
if they yes, want to yes. do a long touring uh, trip. <laughs> yes, yes, but yes. it's so rewarding. But and eventually when you're like in shape and you're used to it, like everything becomes just amazing. I mean, obviously the two weeks were also amazing because we met a lot of nice people and the nature changed. So all those things we already experienced, but yeah, it's did, hard work. Did you plan your whole uh, trip? Did you know exactly where you want to start and where you're going to finish or just go with the flow? Yeah. Yeah, as I, uh, we have said that we want to travel for two years. And in the beginning we, um prepared the plan like where to go when to go but this changed very quickly <laughs> so, we gave up on this after the first because, couple of days yeah and at some point it was really stressful because you had to make every day a specific amount of kilometers and if you don't make it then you have to do it in the next day so it's yeah. sum up so this was really stressful and at some point we said, and we are actually on a journey. We are traveling, not to challenge ourselves. And so- Stop yeah, planning. So, yes. Yeah. So yeah. we still plan. So we, we, we know where we want to be in the next two or three weeks, but we are not, um, we always say- Planning uh, every day. Yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. Also, I mean, we changed our route so many times. We changed the countries we passed all the time, like even this. So what's the what's the point? And also now we changed. I mean, like what happened now was not planned that we are here. So sometimes you, you have to change your plan and then uh, stay open for, yeah, for situations you cannot plan. And also like... In the first couple of months, we really tried to um, get some uh, milestones, like arriving there, arriving there, blah, blah, blah. Not like sightseeing, this was never our uh, intention. But because of the project, sometimes we have to be in cities where we meet with uh, organizations or universities. So this is the only planning actually uh, we do. Um, but we figured that um, we leave ourselves very little time to connect with locals if we plan like that. Mm -hmm. Like now in Oman, for example, we didn't have a plan at all because we had so much time and um, we didn't have to stay inside. So we didn't have to book anything in advance because obviously the weather in Oman is amazing. So we can <laughs> stay outdoors the whole time and um, it's uh, legal everywhere. So it's very easy to camp. And um we connected with so many people like because it didn't matter if we cycle 30 or 100 kilometers mm. even if someone invited us in their house after 20 30 kilometers we were like yeah okay we'll just go for it now yeah so where, where did you cycle uh, at the moment which country did you cross where did you go so we started from berlin to turkey so basically we crossed uh, Czechia, austria then Slovenia, yeah, Slovenia. Was Croatia. Croatia. Yes, Croatia. Montenegro. No, right. first it was Bosnia Herzegovina, then Montenegro, uh, then Albania, then Greece, and then Turkey. Turkey. And uh, yeah. from Turkey, we flew into Oman. Yeah, and then we wanted to go back to Turkey, actually, but um, because uh, of uh, the new entry and visa regulations for Turkey, we cannot, we couldn't go in there. All so right. we can only enter Turkey again um, on the 20th of April and then the 180 days would be over and but we weren't aware of the close to a tourist no. no it's not close you have a, um, like you get a visa but you have like 180 days and in, in within 180 days you have 90 days where you can stay in Turkey yeah okay so you you can like stay 10 days you can like go out from Turkey and go, um, go in again. But then you still, you, you just have 80 days left. So they're counting it down. Yeah. So right. within the 100 days, you just have 90. Yeah. And uh, we spent already three months in uh, Turkey. So it wasn't possible for us to um, enter Turkey again. Yeah, and before that, it was just 90 days and you could go in and out. And still a lot of people go in and out. And we were therefore not actually uh, thinking that it wasn't possible because we didn't overstay the 90 days, but we didn't uh, understand the 180 days rule properly. And then we figured out that a lot of people just go back and um, risk overstay because the fine for that is not so high. 
we don't want to overstay, you know, because um, like traveling with an NGO, speaking in front of uh, organizations and then being illegal in the country, it just doesn't go well together. Yeah. Did you <laughs> so arrive just, in Istanbul? <laughs> when you arrived in Turkey, you went to Istanbul or you went somewhere else? No, no we, the first um, goal was Istanbul. But then, <laughs> as we said already, we changed our plan. Yeah. So when we entered uh, Turkey, we were like, okay, we can go now to Istanbul and then fly somewhere in uh, Asia, or we will stay in Turkey and just go on. Because we love the landscape and the people and the hospitality. This, so where, where did you go in, in Turkey? Which, which area? Mm -hmm. Yes, we uh, went to Antalya. Antalya. So we, yes, from Antalya, then we stayed for two months. We had uh, a volunteer. Oh, cool. In, uh, alternative education center. Yeah. And from after that, we flew to uh, Moscow, Oman. Yeah. Because something that people need to know, because I cycled from France to Turkey in 2019. And when you mm -hmm. arrive in Istanbul on your bicycle, that is terrible. There yeah, is it no is. shoulders at all for bicycle. You're on the highway, yeah. extremely dangerous. It's extremely yeah. dangerous on the bicycle. Yeah. Same thing applies to Izmir, actually. When we went to Izmir, it was also insane. Also, Izmir is same like Istanbul, very hilly. Yeah. So uh, then it's hilly, there's a lot of traffic, and there's no shoulders. Also in Antalya, but at least Antalya is flat. So uh, oh, yeah. this was not... <laughs> Much yeah. of a problem. I mean, the city itself is flat, but the, the the traffic is also horrible. Yeah. So this, during uh, your your trip, depending on the country that you have, you are, did you find difficult to find food or water? Okay, I would like. Um, we were always like finding food was easy, right? Yeah. Um, like at, in Europe was super easy also to get water. Um, in Oman, um. Yeah, well, this really depends. When we went into the mountains, there was no uh, grocery shop or something like that. So we had, in this case, we had to plan. So we had to um, stock, uh, yeah, buy food uh, and uh, top up our uh, essentials. And finding water was surprisingly easy as um, there, every mosque in Oman uh, has water so you you can get water there and also they have like um, a water system mm -hmm. so there's like a big barrier somewhere in the desert or in the mountain really it's true and then you can basically get fresh water all right so, yeah water was not a problem so we yeah. have a water filter which we carry with us yeah. and also those um, uh, tablets you know which cleans the water but we haven't used it even once all right so <laughs> this was uh, uh, never an issue to get food or water but how many liters there roughly do you use uh, liras no liters. Oh, yeah, liters. Uh, liters yeah liters so at least you wanted to cook i don't know if you cook every day but if you cook yeah, every, yeah, day, every day drink every day and yeah yes. yeah so basically we we filled our water always in the morning and in the evening before we pitch our tent so when we are driving, like let's say eight hours, it's at least, I don't know, four <laughs> liter each. Yeah. yeah, four liter each. So yeah, it also depends on the country. Like in uh, Greece, we it was super cold and raining. Yeah, that's true. So we didn't drink so much. In yeah. Oman, it was super hot and dry. So I drink eight, uh, uh, five liters, just drinking water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In this temperature, you around three, I guess. Yeah, three, four. And, and then, in the, then in the evening, we go to the campground with like 12 liters of water. All yes. right. So we, we can go, <laughs> we clean, and in the morning, we can also have a coffee. Yeah. Well, so, about camping, are you most of the time doing wild camping? Or are you staying in guest houses or something? Yeah. Like that? So we stay most of the time outside wild camping. Uh, of course, like, sometimes we have to go in because when we have to work on our project, so writing emails or preparing some presentations, um, then we have to go in as we need internet to, to work. Yeah. So that's the only reason when we go in. I know once we had a sandstorm, so this is also why we went in. Yeah, okay, if, okay, <laughs> if something like that happening, then yes. 
then we will also go in. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, we stay outside. Yes, we also prefer to stay outside. Now, so no shower. No. Yes, we like, shower. We shower. We have like our little bottle, and then <laughs> if we have like uh, water left, so it, we can now clean ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So we just uh, created an outdoor shower system. <laughs> uh, well, what I say this because in 2015, I crossed uh, the Gobi Desert in Mongolia. And it was right. absolutely, you know, there is no way you can take shower. There is no guest house. There is nothing. So I spent yeah. 15 days, almost 15 days with no shower. And when I crossed the border between China, Mongolia to China, I could smell yeah. myself, you know, so I could smell that smell <laughs> really bad. And when I passed the border, they asked me, of course, to open my bag. And I opened my bag. He just put his head above my bag and pushed my bag and said, go away. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> he couldn't uh, smell me. So he's like, go, 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 go. You smell yeah. so bad, you know. <laughs> like, like, this Mongolia is... also doesn't have rivers or anything, right? Like, it's a completely no, dry country. Especially where we were with my, my friend. You were straight in the middle of the desert. So there's no river, no stream, no nothing. Yeah. Uh, it was terrible, 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 man. Yeah, <laughs> so I don't mind. It's good to know that you can last without a shower for such a long time. That's also this, a very this good is too much. This is too much. So when you take a shower after 15 days, you're like, oh my God, you know, when the water is yeah. black. <laughs> like, yes, yes, yes. It's terrible, you know. The amount of dirt that you remove from your body is, is terrible. <laughs> Yo, I believe you. So you I mean, you, the lake water we also had once. Yeah. <laughs> So you, you said before that uh, people are really like uh, inviting you and this and, uh, in their house. So what was your, your most memorable experience about this? Oh, we have so many encounters actually. Each of them was really nice. There was no, no like special one, I, I would say. There were, every time was special because they have other stories. They have other reasons why they invited us. But um, there was once uh, the family who invited you. This is something really, um, I would say, uh, un untypical if uh, the Omanis invite you in their house. And I always had the chance to see... Uh, the women's chambers. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because Omanis are very private people. So they invite you for food all the time, but they put a carpet in front of the house and f feed you and everything. So being invited inside the house is a very um, yeah, unusual thing. Unusual. So not a lot of uh, people in uh, Oman do that. So um, while Jan was waiting outside, I was uh, actually invited to the ladies' chambers and being dressed up like with traditional clothes and everything. So yeah, this was uh, very, yeah, very special. Yeah. Very special. But, yeah, as Jan said, like every single occasion people invite us or even if they don't invite us to their homes, but we had the situation in Turkey where we camped in a public park in the middle of a small mm -hmm. town. And then uh, someone saw us. So in the middle of the night, um, right after dinner, uh, some guy came with coffee and cake and like a picnic blanket. So we were sitting in the night and uh, having cake and tea and smoking cigarettes and talking about life with uh, Google Translate. <laughs> That's awesome. So, that's awesome. Awesome, yeah, it's, it's really nice. So, um, have you felt have... maybe unsafe sometime at one point in your trip? Oh, yeah. Unsafe? No, 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 no. Like, like not unsafe. No. Not unsafe. It was like one night we slept mid middle in the and like middle in the mountains, and there was like a noise, like um, kind kind of like an anime. <laughs> yeah, like, and then we were inside the tent. <laughs> we were like, should we check? He's like, ah, you know what? We don't have to. <laughs> if, if we want something, then we get it anyways. Yeah. So, but then nothing was. Well, uh, I mean, we were, we were Googling uh, if there's any dangerous uh, predators in Oman. It happened in Oman. I was in Oman. Yeah. Google, said, Google said no, but then one of our couch surfing hosts, uh, he told us that there's still tigers in Oman. So I was pretty uh, happy that we didn't. <laughs> There is ti tigers in Oman. In yeah. Arabic, Arabic leopards and Arabic tigers, yeah. But uh, they only live in the mountains. And, like The population is almost uh, extinct. But uh, right. check it, it's uh, Arabic uh, leopards or something. It's I had no the idea they had tigers there. I had no idea. We, we also, 
<laughs> he, also he told us after we told him our story. <laughs> what about the, the visa? Did you get it before? You have to get it in some countries. I think you don't need to get the visa before. You can get it on the border. But some of them you maybe need to prepare before. Yes. So for going to Turkey was no problem. Um, this was easy. And wait, no. We had it to register uh, for Turkey. So it, that's always the internet. Like we have to, uh, before we arrived, we had to um, register. Yeah, we just. Uh, but this form. was because of COVID. Yeah, exactly. It was because of COVID. And in Oman, this was the only occasion where we had to apply for visa. But it was also easy. Uh, it was also online. Yeah. It took us maybe 20 minutes. Max. That's and cool. Then we got. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Oman is uh, very straightforward when it comes to online visa. How much But, was the uh, visa for Oman? 40 euros per person. 40 euros per person. But too bad. Yeah. And you got yeah. one month or you got three months? Yes. One month and then we extended another month in the country for the same price. Yeah. Also very straightforward. So how did you bring yeah. your, your bike from where you, you was in Turkey to the airport? Did you have to take a special taxi? Or? Yeah. So basically, we um, found bike boxes at, at the bike shops. They they give us give us two, and then after that, yeah, we unpacked everything, and uh, packed everything in the box, and then we had to organize the big big taxi to uh, in order to uh, go to the airport. Yeah, I did this as well in Turkey. That was not easy to to find a the taxi. I was warm doing warm shower as well in a, in Turkey, so the person knew. The, the, the kind of taxi I needed. Yeah. Well, yeah. I couldn't find anything online. So I was like, <laughs> I need to find someone yeah. to help me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same applied for us. So I actually posted in the in the bicycle group in Facebook and asked if people know someone who knows yeah. someone who has a bigger yeah. car. <laughs> so this is how we found the person who picked us yeah. up, actually. So guys, if you go to Turkey and you want to go to the airport, find a local, it will help you. <laughs> Yeah. Definitely, it's not easy. That's not easy. <laughs> and yeah, but next time when we go, we can just scrap the boxes and yeah, that's exactly. It. <laughs> What was your most challenging uh, uh, part of the trip? The most challenging part of the trip. Most challenging. I mean, there's two different aspects here. Like, there's one thing which is always challenging us a lot, which is, um, and this is important to mention because we figured out that. Um, a lot of bicycle tourists now also travel with a mission like us, like with a cause. And if people want to travel with a cause, and like in our case, it's like our own project. So we don't raise money for an NGO, but we are an NGO. So we don't just need to raise money, but we actually have work. So um, bicycle touring, including working on a social project is super hard work. Yes, and we totally underestimated how much um, this would uh, conflict also um, our time schedule because we really thought, ah, it's still going to be two legs, but it's not. So this is the big challenge we have to deal with every single day on the trip yeah. because we want to obviously tour and make the most out of the travel itself, but also we don't want to get uh, sloppy with the project. And I think when it comes to the bicycle touring, the biggest challenge was when our tent broke in Oman and we didn't have a... Roof yeah, this above was, our head. Yeah, the tent poles. Yeah, if the tent poles broke, this was also really something we have to improvise. Duct tape was our best friend in this point. <laughs> Always have duct tape with you. Always. Yeah. Always, definitely. And, and, yeah. <laughs> and one day I remember in Greece when it was so cold, oh windy, and rain. This is also something uh, like the rain. If it's raining the whole day or like for a week straight, As we had it, you have to, I don't know, like, this is also a point where we're thinking what I'm doing, why I'm doing this. <laughs> where where was that? In which country was that? This was in Greece. Greece. In North Greece. Greece. North Greece, yeah. Yes, North Greece. Yeah, And, uh, so cold. This was a big challenge, really, because uh, we were so cold, we couldn't feel our fingers anymore. And, And then, we had to make it to the next town because uh, there was no 
place to camp. Also, the rain was so heavy, like we couldn't. We were also in the mountains. Yeah, that is the problem. Was the problem. We were in the cold, mountains. Wet. We didn't want to camp, so we had to make it to the next town. <laughs> we had to cycle almost a hundred kilometers in pouring rain and with like five degrees, and this was a big challenge, <laughs> like a really big challenge. Yeah, we had. Yeah, so this I had is a, I, I had a similar problem when I was in a, in Mongolia. But uh -huh. because of the wind, we had some seven oh, yeah. kilometers headwind and mm -hmm. it was minus uh, five degrees, around minus five degrees. And oh, during the night, it was minus 25 at night. But oh. on that day, we did 40 kilometers in seven hours. We couldn't bike. We couldn't yeah. bike at all. We're on two kilometers per hour. It was freezing cold. And like you said, we were just looking at each other with my friends. Well, what, what do we do now? You know, like... And in Mongolia, you have no one on the roads. And sometimes we spend two or three days on the road and we don't see even a car for two or three days, just us. So you're like, if you're in trouble, you're really in trouble because there is no one yeah. to help you. And this, yeah. this was terrible. <laughs> really the point, like, what the hell I'm doing? You know, what, what can yeah. I do? <laughs> So, but why did you travel in a season where it's so cold? Like, uh, did uh, because you, uh, I was stupid and I didn't plan it well. <laughs> <laughs> so planning is sometimes not so bad, yeah. So it's really. like, I always think like, oh, come on, I can do it, you know? That's not the problem. And when you are there, you're like, damn, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and the wind, the, the wind was the most challenging because it was constant wind every day. So even though it was not 70 kilometers every day, we had a like 25 kilometers at least every day headwind or crosswind. So it was really hard to do more than 60 kilometers a day. Yeah. Really yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wind is uh, not the, fr I mean, at no. least the headwind is not our friend. <laughs> yeah. When you have it at the back, it's no problem. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. We had it like once or twice. Yeah, but this really really, I don't know. The wind is always coming, coming. from the front. Yes. <laughs> Always it happened to me I, exactly the same in Australia. I was across the, the Nolabo Desert in Australia and I had a headwind for 12 days. So it was really, really hard to, to cycle. And I've seen another biker coming on the other side and say, Oh, I'm having the tailwind. It's so cool. I was like, Ah, <laughs> fuck off, you know. <laughs> the guy yeah, was so happy. I said, I'm cruising. I'm doing 160 kilometers a day. How many kilometers have you done? 70. Shut up. <laughs> 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 but that's not unfair. We so had good. it also in Oman. Like we had obviously Oman also because of the desert has a lot of wind. So and then also when we had a lot of headwind and there were bicycle tourists coming from the other side waving and like this, and we were like, oh yes. seriously. <laughs> so now you're back in, in Germany and what is gonna be your next trip? Where are you gonna go? Mm. So the next trip is back to Turkey first, to Antalya. Where we left. Yeah, exactly. There left. was the yeah, exactly. And from there we will start again. So we will proceed to Georgia, uh, Azerbaijan, right? Well, we don't know if we can cross Azerbaijan. So definitely Georgia, Armenia are open at the moment. If Azerbaijan borders are opening, because the land border is still closed, so maybe oh, really? Azerbaijan. But they are normally mm -hmm. open. They are normally open. It's just because of yeah, COVID. But since COVID, no. I mean, you can fly in, but the land borders are closed. So oh. we still hope that in the summer they probably open. And then Iran. And then, I mean, in Iran, we want to arrive in September. So, and then cycling Iran for like two or three months. And then crossing to Pakistan if everything works out well. Okay, so you're going on the other side. You because you have Turkmenistan as well, but Turkmenistan you are not allowed to to cycle there because exactly was, yeah, it's only five days, and you got only five days visa in no. Turkmenistan. It's yeah. seven hundred kilometers oh. on the forty-five degrees. I don't think I it's possible. <laughs> no. I mean, the thing is, my preferred scenario would be uh, taking the ferry from Baku into uh, Uzbekistan. But uh, the ferry also doesn't run since uh, like since COVID oh, or oh. I don't know since a long time. So uh, because I've been to Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan before, but as a backpacker, and I really wanted to go back by a bike. So um, this would be the other option. But so far there's no ferries, so we so try to Pakistan, stay flexible. After Pakistan, you will go to India. Or you will go uh, to Tajikistan. No. Um, this depends on uh, which border is going to be open. <laughs> yeah, which border is going to be open there. Yeah. 
<laughs> so and uh, so we are not planning that far ahead i mean as, as jan said like we change our plans all the time might even be i mean a, a few weeks ago we wanted to go to iran first and then going to the other countries and now because we have a little delay iran is going to be too warm when we cross there so we had to replan everything so we stay flexible and just is it iran open now there is no issue to get to iran now At the moment, no. no. Well, yeah. let's see what's going to happen with the war. But so far, uh, so far, okay. so good. Yeah, because in yeah. 2015 the border was closed. When I wanted to go to Iran, it was closed in 2015. And you can you get it uh, at the border, or you need to uh, organize your visa before to get it? Yeah, before. Okay, so before. At the border. We also got a nice tip. Ooh, yeah, no, no, before. No, no, before. Uh, we also got a nice tip. Um, advice. Or advice, yes, advice. Um, For a visa in, for Iran, you should go for, with the agent, with yeah. the agent who helped you to um, get the visa for 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 for, for entry, um, because they try it by themselves and they get rejected. But after they contact an agent, they got the visa really quickly. Yeah. All so, right, that's a good advice. Yeah, it happened to a few people, so everyone is uh, suggesting to use an agency. And then it goes straight forward, like seven to ten days. Yeah. It takes at the moment. Yeah. To get visa. So you just pay a little bit more, but you're maybe sure to get your your visa. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Nice. Yeah. So, guys, what would be your advice to someone who want to start cycling that never cycled before and want to start cycling? <laughs> the the advice is just start. I would say it's just start, just go. Yeah. 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 I would also advise like don't overthink and overplan. Yeah, don't stress. This this ruins everything. <laughs> yeah, really. This uh, the 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 stress of I have to be there at exactly this uh, time. This gives you headache, and um, I would say stay flexible. We like uh, we planning your trip is so normal. Is is you have to. Yeah, and um, it's not a big problem. So relax, really relax, because <laughs> you will sleep somewhere because the night wake. <laughs> you will <really> always find a place to sleep. <laughs> yes, yeah. you, will, you will sleep somewhere. Anyways, is this under the bridge next to the highway or super nice place, hidden place somewhere? But you will sleep somewhere, so <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Things will just fall into pieces. Yeah, don't worry is a very good advice because <laughs> we had a lot of worries and uh, also we had this, um, you know, you see all those people doing a certain amount of kilometers every day. So you, you, it's easy to be, feel like kind of a failure if you do less or whatever and you think, what, why, like, how can I not cycle 100 kilometers every day? And then at some point we were like, yeah, but it's not about that. Like, no. it doesn't really matter. Uh, because I saw a guy, I think he cycled from Norway to South Africa in like less than a month, doing like 240 kilometers every day. And I, I don't see the point of this. It's amazing, no, no. It's amazing what he did, but I don't see the yeah. point. At all. You, you're missing all the good part of your, your travel. You just yeah. have a bike cycle every day and you don't see anything. You cross yeah. all yeah. the yeah. countries and you don't see anything. Yeah, uh, sure. yeah. But for me, I don't see the point for this. Maybe some people will find it amazing. I find it amazing, but not. That's not something I would like to do. Yeah, yeah same uh, here. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this would be our biggest advice. Just, yes. just enjoy it. So, how people can contact you? Do you have like Facebook, and you have like a website kind of thing. I will put yes. it in the description below if you have some. So we have a website. Uh, which is uh, cyclingforsociety.org. And of course, we also have Instagram and Facebook. And YouTube. And also, yeah, exactly. We also have YouTube. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, many, so many channels. Uh, yeah. So. That's yeah, the best is... way to contact us. Then. Awesome. So, yes. Do you have uh, anything else you would like to, to add to people yeah. who are listening to this podcast? Actually... Yeah, actually, if it's allowed to, uh, we got a lot of requests from friends, and also we saw it a lot in the um, in the Facebook group where we also uh, talked. Is that people are always uh, asking, like, uh, when I bicycle tour, what am I going to eat? Like, what are you eating? I don't know what to cook. I'm getting so bored with the food. Like, I'm only eating pasta. Da, 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 da. <laughs> 
so we were thinking because i'm a passionate cook like i was having a, my own cooking business before and i really enjoyed this challenge of having just one pot but still making like a three course meal like all this, right you know? tell me and yeah. um, <laughs> finding finding all the ingredients in different countries so we were thinking of like um, putting together some of our knowledge and some of our um, also um, passion in a small booklet so we just uh, wrote a small um, it's called cooking on the road it's a small booklet it's in English will be there in German soon and um, yeah so um, we just um, finished that and we're gonna publish a link on our website so um, we will just um, distribute it uh, for any kind of donation. doesn't matter if it's one euro or 100. Because before that, we got donations on GoFundMe, but we didn't have anything to go All give right. back. <laughs> and now we have something to give back to the community. So That's cool. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Because it's a, it's a big challenge to, to know exactly what you're going to eat. During my trip from Mongolia to Tajikistan, I lost 12 kilo. 12 <laughs> Uh, 12 kilo because I was going, it's not fat, 12 kilo of fat. It was like 12 kilo actually muscle. And when I came back, oh. when my wife looked at me, I'm like, what the hell happened to you? You know, because like <laughs> she said, you're burning so much calories every day. Yeah. And the only thing I was eating is instant pasta and tuna can, you know. And you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> and my God, I was so, so skinny when I came back. It was... Yeah, from 75 kilo to, to 62 kilo was terrible. Terrible. Oh, this is really wow. not a lot. Really how not. tall are you? In four months. Oof. But how tall are you? I'm 170. Oh, okay. 60 kilo for 170? Oh my God, this yeah, is really I was so skinny. I was so, so skinny. <laughs> my wife freaked out when she saw me. I was like, man, what happened to you? <laughs> I'm on the run. I'm <laughs> every day. What do you expect? <laughs> No, yeah, it's very important yeah. to stay healthy for your strength and your like uh, mental health, and mental also health for sure. like you will have long term uh, effects if you lose too much weight. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, it's very important to eat, 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 eat. I mean, we also lost weight, but uh, not as much as you did. <laughs> yeah. So as yeah. soon as your um, link is ready, you can send it to me, and I will add it in the Definitely. description below, so people can can download it as well if they if they want to. Thank you. Yes, thank we will. Thank you very thank much you. for being here today, guys. <laughs> thank you, Roman. Thank you. <laughs> you all the best. And oh, you too. Yes, thank you. We thank see each other on the road. <laughs> all right. Bye bye.